or state of being like inside. It is a time used to describe something beyond ordinary. Praise the Lord. When you want to describe God, there is no amount of words you can use to describe Him. But be, because it's what? It exceeds our understanding. Praise the Lord. When you talk about greatness, you talk about a what? A state of distinction. Praise the Lord. That's why we say there is no one like our God. He stands at that top. Nobody can even get very close to it. So we can't compare other gods with him. Greatness is the state of what? Excellency. It is a state of what? Perfection. A state of what? Superiority. Greatness is a state of what? Supremacy. Hmm. If you look at all those qualities, it can only be ascribed to what? To God alone. And that's what really makes our world great. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That is what really makes our Lord world great. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. And, and I pray that you and all God's holy people will have the power to understand. That was Apostle Paul praying. He's actually making a prayer there. The greatness of Christ's love. How wide, how long, and how high, and how deep that love is. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 19 says, Christ's love is greater than anyone can ever know. But I pray that you will be able to know that love, that you can be filled with the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Wanting every believer want to be filled up is the fullness of God. But the condition to be filled with the fullness of God, you have to know the greatness of Christ's love. And the greatness of Christ's love, they are looking at four things in the verse 18. How wide is the greatness of Christ's love? How long is the greatness of Christ's love? How high is the greatness of Christ's love? And how deep that love is for me to operate in the fullness of God. Praise the Lord. So the first thing I'm looking at this morning is how wide is, is what is God's love? Praise the Lord. When you see uh, time, when you see the picture of Jesus Christ, you see him stretching his hand. He welcomes everybody. Praise the Lord. The, the bread, which uh, King James refers to as is what? Is what to the, the coverage of what? Of our Father's love. Who does it cover? Who does it include? It implies Christ's worldwide love embrace all men. Praise the Lord. I say it to embrace all men. There is no one that is included in this love we're talking about. It includes all nations, the Gentiles as well as the Jews. That's the good news for us. It includes all race. Either you have a dark skin or you have a light skin. Praise the Lord. The oneness of Christ's love, I said it includes what? All race, dark or light skin, all nations, Gentiles as well as what? Jews. It includes all men, including women. No one is what? Excluded. The question is, if I have to be the only one in this world, will Christ have come for me? Will he have done what he did 2000, 2000 years ago? The answer is what? Yes. Praise the Lord. If you have to be the only one, God will still go ahead and send his son to come and do what? Die for us. That's how generous our God is. God looked at everything he created. He said they were worth very good. 
before then he's been saying good, very good, very good. But at this particular point, 31, he said, everything he created were what? Very good. You are very good. That is why he cannot, he cannot afford to lose you. Praise the Lord. That is why he can afford to send his son to come and die for you. Because you were very good. He looked at his creation and said you were very good. God never made a person or thing that he didn't love. Everything he created were what? Were good and he loved them. He didn't create any junk. He didn't manufacture any junk. He made us and loved us. And his love is what is unconditional. He loves us very, very much. When you look at the parable of the God's son in Luke 15, 18, 24, you can imagine what that young man did. He woke up one day and he called his dad, Daddy, give me what belongs to me. And the dad gave it to him. The guy packed everything and embarked on the journey. Praise the Lord. The Bible said he went and squandered everything. When everything finished, his eyes now open. No one was ready to do what? Feed him. He was not eating the what? The food of the swine. He was dining with the swine, sleeping with the swine. That somebody that's coming, you know, coming from a what? A wealthy family. But the Bible said one day, ha, he said, ha, even the servants in my father's house, they don't eat with it. They don't die with the pig. He came back to his senses. I said, I will go back to my father's house. Thank God he made that decision. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will go back to my father's house. And the Bible recorded is that from afar, when the father saw him, he was so excited. He was happy that my lost son has come back. Before he got home, he asked the servant, go and get the word, the finest robe. Put a ring on him. Do the word, the fattest calf. <laughs> you can imagine somebody that has run away, that has spent all your money. I bet it with you, if you are to be in this world, I know it is a story, nobody will receive that child. I said, that child, you must have been a pastor child. <laughs> to my house, go back to where you are coming from. That's what I will tell you. Go back and change your name. You can't bear my father's name anymore because you, you don't, you don't show that you are my, you know, you are my true son. But the father look at that boy, he will receive him. Unconditional. He welcomed me. Forget about what his brother was saying. But I'm focusing on what the Father did. That is the kind of love God has for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. However, I said God's love for everyone does not mean that everyone will be saved. I've just told you that He loved the whole world. The bigness, the badness of this world, God loves. But not everyone will be what? Will be saved. Matthew 25, 46. Matthew 25, 46. God will not ignore sin, for he is a God of justice. Second to, uh, Thessalonians 1.6 Sin cannot go unpunished forever. Remember what he said in Romans 3.25-26 That now makes me to ask, does God love everyone? Yes, he loves what everyone. John 3, 16, remember what he said. He showed mercy and kindness towards to all. All men, that's in life skin. No restriction. All nations, Gentiles, as well as what? Jews. Does God love Christians more than he loves non-Christians? No. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not in regard to his word, to his merciful love. He loves everybody. 